The NFL free agency has kicked off with a fucking bang. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Off the Bench. My name is Jorge Pajares. Today we have a guest, one of my best friends, Roland, is joining the show. We're talking all NFL free agency. It's going to be a great show, jam-packed. It's going to be, it's an hour-long episode today. We're, we're going deep, 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 deep into the NFL free agency. I got my Jets jersey on. I'm ready to talk football. Are you King Hez with Wake Up right now? Welcome to Off the Bench. Gentlemen, I'm joined by Roly Oli Oli, Roland, my best friend from, for years now, fellow football yes, fan, yes. fellow NFL fan, yes, sir. and we are both just going crazy over the NFL news. It's ridiculous. How are you doing, Roll? I'm doing good, man, doing good, just trying to wrap my head around all these. Now, now let, let, let's talk about the Panthers, because y'all, y'all made some decisions. <laughs> we have made some decisions, some good, some bad. So right now, there's this whole debate about uh, Cam Newton, whether there was yes. he demanded a trade, or the teams forcing him out, and then they signed Teddy Bridgewater. So what, what's your whole take on this situation? Well, well, I'd like to just start by saying that Cam Newton has been nothing but good to the. Panther franchise since he's been drafted. That much I can agree with. Um, I do agree that he probably didn't go to ownership or management and try to request a trade or try to even seek a trade. I think he was content with trying to work things out in Carolina. Carolina's just rebuilding, you know, Luke Keekley's gone. They let Gray also walk out the door. You know, last year we let Devin Fox just walk out the door, you know, so they're, you know, they're trying to get new people in, some of the older people out. I think they didn't see a future with Cam, and they obviously see something in Teddy Bridgewater that, you know, got them interested. Well, that's, the, the whole Teddy Bridgewater thing is, is interesting to me because y'all got the head coach Very. that the Jets were interested before yeah. they hired Gase, and now you have yes. the quarterback that the Jets had and traded away <laughs> to the Saints. So y'all, yeah, y'all are basically going... Well. Y'all going the way, the alternate universe where the Jets hired the right guys. That, that, your, team, yeah, that your team should have been trying to, I mean, I, I don't know what, I, I don't know what you think fully of Adam Gates. I can tell you what I know, what I think of the guy. <laughs> but, All right, you but go, you go, go ahead, go ahead, because I, I have thoughts. <laughs> yes. Um, well, Adam Gates, let's look at the facts, right? Let's look at the facts. He had Ryan Tannehill for... What three years? Three, four three, years. Yeah. Three years. Yeah, and although not terrible, not competitive though either. In the same breath, you know, they were they weren't horrible, but they weren't competitive. And if you're not competitive, you might as well just rebuild because you know it's not working. You know, I don't blame Adam Gage nor do I blame blame Ryan Tannehill for why it didn't work in Miami or for either one of them, but. I do. You, we see Ryan Tannehill in the playoffs, and we see Adam Gates not using Le'Veon Bell the way he should. Have used. <laughs> uh, yeah. If we had to assume which one it was, we'll, we'll go with Adam Gates. Yeah, honestly, I was conflicted during the whole playoff run because I see Ryan Tannehill playing, and it's very obvious the Titans made it that far because of Derrick Henry. Oh but yeah, for sure. But then, for but sure. then you see the money they give Ryan Tannehill, and you're like, Tannehill. well, well, hot damn. <laughs> well, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, this, I'm glad you brought that up because we seen the same team basically. They were Derrick Henry led since they basically drafted the guy. Um, and Marcus Mariota just wasn't getting the job done. But when they insert Ryan Tannehill, all of a sudden he's got the job done. You know. So I mean, we're not saying Ryan Tannehill, Tom um, Brady. We're not even calling him Derek Carr. But you know. He, <laughs> He's not bad, you know. He he deserves some respect. He can do some things. 
Well, he definitely earned all the money he got with that playoff run. And For sure. Hopefully, sure. hopefully Derrick Henry gets out of that franchise tag hell. Okay. I think that franchise run. tag. I, I, I only think that franchise tag was used to keep him. Yeah. Because uh, they, if they didn't franchise tag him, he would have lost the market. Him. Yeah, you could have. You could have risked that. You, you I think really, they still. Not going. You see that they. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, you see they let Jarrell Casey go in a trade. Yeah. I believe that was to open up cap space to then now you know get that deal. Uh, Derek Henry. Yeah, and you mentioned Tom Brady, and boy, what a, <laughs> what, what a twist! What a twist of what all twist. twists! Everyone was saying yes. the Chargers. He loves LA. He has a house well, in LA. His, can, can, his can wife I, loves can LA. Can I make a disclaimer? Can I make a disclaimer? <laughs> and then, I, I was never fully sold on this Chargers Tom Brady love fear that everyone else had going on for the man. I, I did It didn't make sense to me because although Tom Brady, we can all agree, is better than Philip Rivers. Yes, so ain't nobody gonna question that. But at his age, at Philip Rivers, if you didn't want Philip Rivers, why did you want Tom Brady? You know, Philip Rivers ain't even Tom Brady's age. <laughs> you let the man walk out the door. You know, so I'm like, and, and now the Chargers, <laughs> since they lost out on Brady, they're, they're going full on Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor. Yes. He's, he's an average quarterback, I'd say. Maybe a little more than average. He, he did lead a little the Bills to a 9-7 so. playoff. I think, they sh- I, I think the Chargers should give the Bears a call about Mitch Trubisky. I don't think <laughs> Mitch Trubisky's all that good, but he's better than what they got. <laughs> <laughs> but we we were all we all uh, drank that Colin Coward Kool-Aid about the Chargers. Because, you know, Colin we Coward, would have he would have had a field day on FS1 if Tom FS1. Brady went to, went to the Chargers. I mean, listen, it would have been a know-it-all, know-it-all, know-it-all fest. They, they would have, they, like they would have been a constant like guest. But alas, yes. Tom Brady chose the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Bucket, yes. Wild, 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 wild stuff. I didn't. Now we get Drew Brees versus Tom Brady twice a year. But see, here what people say, you know, Matt Ryan's in the same division as well with Julio Jones. And that's, so, that, I mean, that's a Super that's Bowl rematch twice a year, too. Rematch. Yeah, twice, <laughs> you know, twice a year. So, I mean... I think it's, things got interesting. Now, here's what I'll say. I'm going to throw my Panther cap back on okay. for a second here. Um, if the Panthers see what's happening, Tom Brady to Tampa, Matt Ryan still at LM, and Drew Brees be finding two years in New Orleans, um, why would you not go the full on Trevor Lawrence route? You know, like if you're going to, if you're, you're basically saying, we're not going to beat any of these three teams now, we're going to sign Teddy Bridgewater to stay semi competitive. But if I was, if I was, you know, David Kemper and, you know, <laughs> Matt Rule, I would be saying I want Trevor Trevor Lawrence over Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. You know? and definitely Teddy Bridgewater is that guy that you want to just have as, like, the starter. And, and Teddy yes. Bridgewater's earned it. After his, after his journey back oh, yeah, to the injury, sure. he's sure. definitely earned a starting gig. But, yeah, yeah. But I they, they definitely he, need to – there's all the rumors about them going, like, all in, over. For Trevor Lawrence, that's, Trevor Lawrence, man. We'll, we'll see how they do because you really, as especially as a rookie coach going from college to the NFL, you don't want to go so, one for fifteen. You don't. Know, you know. Yeah, you, 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 you want to stay yeah, somewhat got, competitive. The, the fan base would see. I don't want to say the fan base would turn against them because they will all understand. Like I would understand as a Panther fan watching the product they put out. It's Kyle Allen with the starting quarterback. I'll just be like, "Well, we're going all in for Trevor Lawrence." You know? <laughs> I would, I wouldn't think Matt Rule of being a bad coach or anything. I wouldn't say, "Oh, it's Matt Rule's fault. He's the reason why we're winning." You know, winning whatever. Um, but now the pressure's on because now when you sign Teddy Bridgewater, you're basically saying, "Hey, we want to be semi-competitive." Now if we don't go out there and at least win six games, at least six games with DJ Moore, Christian McCaffrey. You know. Now, then I might have questions about, mm, is this the guy, you know... Is he and you, and you definitely him? don't want those gotcha. questions the first year into a, no. so what is now a rebuild. A rebuild. And, and you're hoping sure. that Cam Newton, the whole Cam Newton situation, you get some decent picks back. Because then if you go 6-10, and 10, you might be able to trade up and use those picks in the Cam Newton trade. Carolina is so stupid. It's so stupid for that because when they when they let when they release the information that hey you know Cam Newton's now open for trades, I you you immediately lower the the value you're going to get from the man the moment you say oh he's not happy he wants out now teams are going to be like well he doesn't want to be there anyways you don't want him there so I'm not going to give you much you know you'll get a first round 
a sixth round, fourth round pick. You know, when you really dude, could get a third should... rounder for a Cam Newton. Easily. He's worth a I third, mean, maybe a second, it. depending on how desperate the team is. We just seen DeAndre Hopkins get traded for a second round and David Johnson. And David DeAndre Hopkins is what, top three? I think everyone will yeah. consistently say top three receiver in all football. And he didn't get you know, he went for a second round and David Johnson. Cam Newton, a former MVP, can go for third round and Will yep. Fuller, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it's definitely it's definitely puzzling the whole Houston Texans scenario. The they, they ba- it was yeah, basically actually... from from when you look at the Cardinals' perspective, it was a salary dump because they didn't want David Johnson. Johnson. He never he never Back had a full turn. season where, without turn. injuries, and mm-hmm. you, it was really a salary dump plus a second round pick. And if yeah. you're the Texans, you just made the divisional round. You're trying to help Deshaun Watson become one of the best quarterbacks because it's you see Lamar Jackson, you see Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. They're they're taking control of the AFC. The Texans they could are. win that division and be consistent division winners. Yeah, consistently. Yeah. And you just trade away your best receiver. Now they traded away your best receiver, and then doing so, you're going to lose your franchise quarterback. Basically, and you got to wonder what Bill O'Brien is doing up there as as general manager. Whether they need to pull a Doc Rivers and put him, get it, take that GM role away and say you're just the coach. You coach the players mm-hmm. we give you yes. because yes. I, yes. I know this draft class is filled with a lot of great receivers, but they're not DeAndre yeah. Hopkins great. <laughs> none of them will be DeAndre Hopkins. And I, and I like all of the receivers coming up this year, but none of them will be DeAndre Hopkins. No. So the, te- the Cardinals are definitely now a dark horse to win the NFC West. They're definitely a dark horse. With- I had this conversation with our friend Isaac. And, um, <laughs> he, he sold that now the Cardinals are – you know, everything. They're great. I mean, I argue to him, that's still the toughest division, I believe, in football. You got the Rams, who all about two years ago was in the Super Bowl. You got Seahawks, who go going to be competitive with Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson. And the 49 are fresh off of the Super Bowl loss, who's going to be expired as all could be, you know, to, to try to get back there. I don't know if DeAndre Hopkins puts Arizona in San Francisco's class, but it, it should be interesting to see how that works out. And now that we have that extra playoff team, it makes things a lot more interesting. So For now, sure. you know, before you can only say that only two teams in each in one or two divisions can make it. Who's going to make it? Yeah, sure. But now you can make a case for you Seattle. Can. You can make a case for mm-hmm. Arizona to just make that seventh and last uh, and here's the playoff thing. spot. Here's the thing. As you just said, now at your playoff spot, teams are going to be like, hey, you know, you know that sometimes it all the, depends on coaches is, I don't have to win it all. I just got to make, you know, playoff players, playoff players. And I'll tell you, Atlanta's going to be a dark horse, you know, to get that last spot. Um, Dallas, Philly, they're going to flip-flop for the division. And then whoever's not going to be in the league is going to be a dark horse. Chicago, I'll tell you, Nick Foles, I like that. You know, I like Nick Foles, what's, what he brings outside of what Mitch Trubisky brings. So, you know. Well, apparently a lot, a lot of fans are happy that the Bears traded for Nick Foles. Apparently, the fans, the, the fans are not happy about Nick Foles because uh, they, they, they haven't given up on Mitch Trubisky yet. Or, Cam Newton was right there for the taking, sir. He was. And you could have you could have traded that fourth-round pick for Cam Newton. For Cam Newton. And, and sure you could have said, sign our Trubisky. <laughs> you know, now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think, I think Chicago's fear is... Since you know the whole lockdown, you can't right now. You can't do any testing or anything. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Chicago was sold on how healthy Cam Newton is. Mm. You know, nobody knows outside of Carolina how healthy the guy is. So I mean, if you, you say a fourth rounder, you're like, hey, I can wash my hands with that. But you know, we see fourth rounders turn into MVPs. This so. guy Prescott <laughs> right now, he's he's trying to get a. He just got franchise tag, and he was a fourth yes. round pick. And Dallas, is, he, they're doing some type of Kirk Cousins dance with, De- with uh, Dak Prescott because they, they're I'm not gonna, willing to see that money after after I'm, all I'm, the things he did for them. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna ask you what I what I've been wanting to ask somebody for the longest period of time. I haven't got it out yet, but here it is: If you're the Dallas Cowboys and you're the New England Patriots, you you both don't seem to be. I'm not convinced Dallas is sold on Dak. Obviously, Bill Belichick was ready to go for Brady. Was that not a fair swap that you wouldn't have done if you're the, you know, I'll tag Tom, I'll tag Dak, 
I mean, flip flop. And uh, I, it's, seamlessly, it works for both parties. Right. But now, Bill Belichick gets his young quarterback, who's clearly good. I don't, I don't think nobody's going to question that price about top two quarterback. Yeah. And then Tom and Bill Jerry Jones will get his long lost son, Tom Brady. I mean, yeah, we match made to heaven. Oh, that would have been interesting. Ooh, especially now that they have Amari Cooper and uh, Cooper. Zeke locked and up. Zeke. That would have been really Ooh. interesting. And then Bill Belcher could say, watch me develop Dak Prescott into a Prescott. winner. Yes. And now, well, that could be interesting. Well, the, the, the yes. Patriots right now are out of a quarterback because now they, they got, who is it, Stidham as their Stidham. number one? It's listed as their number one. I'm not convinced that they're not going to try to get Cam, nor am I not convinced they might try to get James Winston. Jameis Winston would be interesting because Jameis Winston, he, he's got talent. He just, he just sure. blind. <laughs> yeah. He need to get yeah. those eyes checks. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, like, I mean, he's, I think he's one of the people who lack, I mean, Derek Cotter, Cotter, however you pronounce that man's last name, no disrespect to the guy, <laughs> and um, Bruce Arians are two, I think, pretty good offensive minds, and they couldn't get, you know, Jameis to cut down on interceptions at all. But Bill Belichick's the greatest coach you, you have ever seen. Yeah. We wouldn't allow really for Bill Walsh, so we can't, you know, <laughs> really make any comparisons really there. But easily the best coach we've ever seen. If anyone can get James Winston to cut down those INTs, it would be the man. I definitely see you know? Winston going to the Pats as more of a of a real realistic, possi- uh, realistic possibility move. than Andy yeah, Dalton is. getting traded from the Bengals. If you're the New England Patriots, why would you want Andy Dalton? <laughs> You know, like, you know, we just there watched. was all those rumors about Belichick being fascinated with Andy Dalton, but at the, Andy, at the end of the day, it's Andy Dalton. Andy this is Dalton. the man that cost Marvin Lewis his job. His job. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And I will argue, he, he's had A.J. Green for five, six years, really. And I will argue A.J. Green made him look a lot better than what Andy Dalton oh, really, really is. You really, you really saw the true colors with Last Andy year. Dalton when A.J. Yeah. Green was not out. <laughs> Yeah, you saw, you saw the, the TCU guy, not the Cincinnati guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, watch it, man. I watched a little TCU. <laughs> back in the day. I like hey, I'm a converted <laughs> Arizona State man. Got, got to support Herm Edwards. You play to win the game. You play to win the game. But you're, going back to Brady, most... this is by far the best situation I think he's ever been in since For Randy sure. Moss. Got since Randy Moss the Patriots. And, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. He got Mike Evans. And OJ Howard, you know, he's he's not the best tight end. But that boy can catch. OJ Howard, I think, could be used as like a trade deadline piece, maybe at yeah. next year's trade deadline. Um, a lot of teams are going to be interested. In he, like you say, he's not a bad tight end. He can definitely do some things. And if Tom Brady can, I mean, if OJ Howard can have, let's say, 55 receptions by the midway point, you know. And Tom Brady will definitely player. give him those 55 receptions. You know how he loves his tight ends. Tight ends. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I don't think Bruce Arians is sold on him, though. It's either Bruce Arians or James Winston. One of the two just didn't connect with O.J. Howard. I don't know how many yards and receptions he had last year, but we played him twice a year at Tampa Bay. And he, I, I don't even remember his name being called. <laughs> <laughs> but this is definitely the most talented team he's he's had in years. For sure. And that defense... defense though, Levante David is a beast at linebacker. He's I don't great. Want to He's him. great. He's <laughs> great. Now, the rest of them, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. Uh, yeah. They need some corner help. They need some corner help like they're the Philadelphia Eagles or something. They need help. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I mean, when you have Tom Brady, that, that defense can do work because the problem really last year with that defense was that James Winston really all, put him in a, yeah. a bad situation. There was always on the field. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it's like you can't you can't throw thirty picks and then expect your your defense to finish top fifteen and then in points for sure not. and for sure yards not. allowed when they're starting at their own twenty five after James uh-huh. throws <laughs> a pick or a pick six. Hey man, that's when you not throw no pick sixes. You know what I'm saying? He didn't always put them in bad situations. <laughs> but since 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 we're since we're talking, uh, let me go to my Jets. Because yes, yes. So I was about to say started. we we haven't touched on your Jets yet. We haven't touched on the Jets, and that was that, that was by my own doing, because <laughs> I, I have I have thought this is this episode is going to have hashtag I have thoughts because I have a lot of thoughts. He, it, it, trust me, I, I, he's messaged me guys. He has some thoughts. I, I understand. <laughs> you know, you don't want to give Graham Glasgow that offensive lineman a ton of money, but no. damn it, 
We need offensive line help. <laughs> yeah. When I last when I, when I checked free agency, we had maybe the rookie red ta- right tackle Udoga, Brian Winters at right guard, and that's it. <laughs> we that's we cool. needed offense. And sure, we're gonna draft an offensive tackle. Sure. Draft first round. Yeah. Number eleven. First round. Dude. Sure, that, that's 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 a guaranteed yeah. given. Yeah, you can you can book that in. But damn it, get some get some people on the old line. Like, uh, I like that kid from Georgia. You <laughs> guys can get that guy. Yeah. I'm, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping we get him. Either that, that dude from Georgia or, uh, who is it, Willis from Alabama. Alabama. Oh, he'll be gone. And he'll be gone. I mean, he'll, he'll be, be long gone, gone but yeah, he'll be gone here's before fingers before crossed that he drops. Because <laughs> Le'Veon Bell's going to look at him like, I love you. Open up those holes. <laughs> we might have a Laramie Tunsil situation where he gets caught smoking weed before the draft. And he just oh, please. The please, Lord. <laughs> It's Vegas. It has to happen. <laughs> it's Ve- It's in Vegas. It has to happen. Yeah, we well, hey, baby, strippers, baby. whatever, that, that makes them fall to 11. It makes the Jets mm. look genius. Mm-hmm. But they, saw, they, they finally signed Connor McGovern, a center. They wanted him last offseason, but Denver offered him a ton more money for a one-year deal. And we gave him a three-year deal for, I believe, $37 million. And, yeah, he only allowed one sack since being with the Broncos. But that's great. And then we signed another offensive guard. We re-signed Alex Lewis, who in Madden you may you may not have heard of him. Many people may not have heard of him, but he's homegrown. He's homegrown. He, he did his job. Shut it. If if you guys heard of this guy before, but he's homegrown. He he can he, he was he, he was selected by uh Joe not Joe Douglas uh Mike McCagnon. Okay. And really, I'm like, okay, great. But we need more offensive linemen. This is these are great depth pieces. But we yes. we still have no certified left guard Starters. to start off. Yeah. We still don't have a left tackle. And secondly, where's the receivers? I'm sorry, but if Robbie Anderson is gonna be your only signing as a receiver, then what what, what the hell are we doing? <laughs> is he a free agent? Robbie Anderson? Robbie Anderson right now is a free agent. And he's looking the rumors are he's looking for fifteen mil. And the Jets are offering him 10. And I, I guarantee you someone's going to pick him up for 15 mil. And then, we're gonna so- and then the Jets have interest with Phil Dorsett as a possible Robbie Anderson replacement. Now you tell me, is, is Phil Dorsett our number one receiver? He's never been. He's, he's never been. Now, what, what in the hell are you doing, Joe Douglas? <laughs> what in the I mean, hell? Joe, Joe Douglas must not see Robbie Anderson at that guy either. <laughs> We saw we re-signed Brian Poole, which is great. You know, we need a nickel corner. Corner, yes. A corner, a corner is great, but like that's a nickel corner. We need we need more. There's a lot yeah. of guys out there. We just lost Chris it's been Harris. Since wrong, it's, it's been a long time. It's been. It, I have to find. I, I was looking through my Instagram and I found a poster of Revis, Cromarty, Bart Scott, yeah, and, hey, Mar- and, and those boys on a poster, and I'm like, damn, those were the good old days. When we had a good defense, solid corners. Yeah. And Jamal Adams I mean, can't guys, play by himself. You guys have Tremaine Johnson, right? Tremaine Johnson, the corner that you got to have Now they're cut him. The Jets cut him for a June 1st designation Ooh. because that was by far the worst signing in Jets history. Maybe maybe um, it's the worst decision next to drafting uh, Golson. <laughs> the worst pass rusher the league has ever seen. See. Hey, man. And honestly, it's just, I understand the need for a team to be patient and not want mm-hmm. to overpay for players. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you, you can't have a Trumaine Johnson every year. And you have to be smart with how much you uh, offer you, you spend. I would argue that last year, the Jets were just so wrapped up in the, you know, we had so much. Last year, I, I, I remember he served me, you know, correctly, you know. You guys had a lot of money to play with in the cap space. Yeah. So I, I remember you guys went full in, you know, Le'Veon Bell, Tremaine Johnson, you know, T.J. Mosley, you know. You guys were – there, there was some – We names, were big you know? spenders. But then, but then you looked at it, and then you were like, well, how much – like, Le'Veon Bell, okay, yeah. Nobody, you you're never going to argue with Le'Veon Bell. You get Le'Veon Bell, that's a great sign. But to me, Jonathan, for what he was asking for in your scheme, how much, you know, how much was he going to make an impact? 
it was a contract year when he had that really good year. Other than that, he's been about average. So, you know, when you guys went spending all that money, it was kind of like, hmm, I hope this don't come back to bite them. And it did. Even with Greg Williams yes. coming back as his D coordinator. And Greg yes. Williams, kudos to Greg Williams, because he really made something out of the complete nothing that was our defense. Nothing. Especially after we traded Leonard Williams to the Crosstown Giants. Giants. Something that's n- never happened before in they the history of New York. A trade between the Jets and Jets. Never happened. And Joe Douglas said, you know what? Fuck you guys. I'm going to trade this guy for some picks. I don't care who it's to. As long as I get some value. And I appreciate that. What I think, do you guys get for them? What do you guys think get a third round, them? a third round pick? I think it was. So, because I know, I, I know we have two third round picks. What? I think it's ours and the Giants. Okay. But okay. at the end of the day, it's like, all right, you you have all these undrafted free agents, these random no names that you traded six, seventh round picks for. Picks for. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you need a number one. You need you need a number one guy, and um, whether you look on offense or you look on defense, there's no number defense. one guy outside of Jamal Adams. For sure. Yes, yeah, for sure. For sure. And here's a question for you. As a Jets lover and all, obviously happy she Tom Brady walk out your division because now there's hope. You know, there's hope. But you see the Buffalo Bills making moves to get Stephon Diggs. You see the Dolphins pick up Jordan Howard. You know, they're make, they're slowly trying to gain traction. We don't know what the Patriots are going to do yet, but Bill Belichick and we trust, you know, he'll do something. <laughs> you know, he's not going into next year with Stim and Matt quarterback. We, we know that. Um... This is the first time, I believe, probably since Tom Brady got injured, where you guys feel like, hey, there's a chance for somebody else outside the Patriots to win the division. How does it feel knowing that your team is literally the only team in the division right now who is not doing anything to, to gain traction? See, that, see it's, it's concerning because I, I, I want, I, on one end, you're like, yeah, Byron Jones, he's the best corner on the market. But then he's never had an interception in his career. And now, and now the Dolphins made him the highest paid corner in the league. And I'm like, all right, he's no Malcolm Butler. Nah, no. <laughs> no. No. But I understand why you gave him that money. And then you look at yeah, trades yeah, yeah. like the Houston Texans did, getting, uh, getting a second rounder for DeAndre Hopkins, the trade with for Stephon Diggs. And you're like, well, we have picks. Why mm-hmm. don't we get in the mix? Why don't we say, hey, we have two third rounders. We'll give you one of them. One of them. For either Hopkins or Diggs, knowing that Diggs is frustrated. Help the quarterback. (laughs) At that point, man, I'll give both three, though, for DeAndre Hopkins. And and that's what's so frustrating for Jets fans, because you see these players basically go get traded for a bag of chips. And you're just like, well, we have a bag of chips. Why don't we (laughs) offer them? And they're like, no, these bag of chips are Pringles. <laughs> we don't want to get them. They're sour cream and onion Pringles. We value yeah. the Pringles. We're not sharing any of our Pringles with them, with those teams. Yeah. And it's All like, right. uh, and looking at that offensive line, I'm like, yeah, it's good. These these additions are good, I guess. But mm-hmm. I would not be surprised if week three comes and Sam Darnold's on the IR. Because last year was mono. This year it's that faulty offensive line. And then so Le'Veon here, Bell's going to say, you know what? Hear this. Hear this. Hear this. <laughs> is that a Le'Veon Bell jersey that you have on you? I do. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Um, how would you feel if the Jets decided, hey, you know, we're in cap hell right now. It's not looking good for us. Like you said, our offensive line's beat up. We're not using Bell the way he should be utilized. Yeah. If you were to, if you were to put Bell on the market, what do you think you're getting back for him? And do you think it will be worth it if you're the Jets owners? I have to get multiple picks, including a second rounder at least. Okay. It has to be a second rounder, something in value. Yes. If not, if not, if not multiple picks, a player of equal caliber that will make a difference. Because as much as I love Le'Veon Bell, we don't deserve him. <laughs> we don't deserve Le'Veon Bell. He's he's too good. And I know I know he he came the, the whole like. Rumor and story with him is that he came to the money because the Jets oh, were the only sure. team that were going to give him all for the sure. That was not giving that money. Yeah, for sure. But at the end of the day, it's like, all right, I understand last year so our quarterback decided to make out with a girl in a New Jersey club, and he ended up getting mono. 
He's, he's no Jimmy Garoppolo, though. And uh, I, I, I kind of wish it was. I kind of wish it was a Jimmy Garoppolo. Because at least you could say, well, he got hurt. So you can't do anything about that. Yeah. But the fact that it was mono, you know, the kissing disease. Something that, you know, every teenager in their youth experiences. <laughs> hey, man. He, 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 he's, he's still learning on the job. He's learning on the job. And, and the fact that he was out multiple weeks with mono tells mm. me, damn. This guy is, he's pretty fragile. <laughs> I think he's more committed to partnering the winning games for the New York football team. And see, that's what's concerning to me because it's always the issue with these USC quarterbacks. I think I, the only one that didn't have that much concern was Carson, Carson Palmer. Palmer. But sure. that's pretty much it. And I know we, mm -hmm. we've constantly talked about the notion that USC doesn't produce any winning quarterbacks. I mean, someone can name them, please. <laughs> you know, please. I'd love to, love to know which one did it. But even and th this is exactly what what uh, led to Mark Sanchez's demise as well. Because if you really look at Mark Sanchez's career, the first year, yeah, he had rookie mistakes, but then he improved in the second year. Third year, he posted better numbers, but the team didn't perform as good. Yeah. Because they, they had Plaxico coming in. It's a new receiver, new receiving core. But Sanchez really partied a lot. He really embraced the Sanchez and the Broadway yeah. Mark monikers we gave him after those two AFC Championship appearances. He had all the clout. <laughs> and I feel Sam Darnold, who's still young, mind you, he just turned 21. Yeah, still young. He's 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 starting to experience that as well. And it's not yeah. it's not great when the one quarterback that won the Jets a Super Bowl was also a partier. So the whole excuse is, well, if Joe Namath can do it, do it, I can do it too. I mean, if Joe Namath, if they can bring a championship to the city, I'll, I'll come back up to New York just to say <laughs> <laughs> that. would be a miracle, you know? And, and that, um, that's my concern with, with Sam Darnold is just, like, mononucleosis is, is such a, 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 it's such a, it's a disease that we adults in our 20s should not should worry about that. at all. Yes, no. Like, maybe here, struck... But to knock you over that this? many weeks. How about this? Do you see the Giants and their quarterback? He seems like he's committed to winning. Daniel Jones, um, Daniel yeah. Dobbs for the New Yorkers. Um, you know, he seems like he's committed to winning. I'm not saying Sam Darnold's not committed to winning. But I don't think winning is the only thing on his mind. I think Daniel Jones really wants to make the New York Football Giants a Super Bowl contender. And that definitely yeah. comes from having Eli Manning there. Yes. And I know, and I know Josh I'll McCown, Josh McCown yeah. you know, he's a decent quarterback. He was a decent mentor. But damn, when when are we going to have it? And that, that's, I was talking to a friend earlier. I'm like, we should probably sign James Winston. <laughs> because, that, wouldn't be a bad, that wouldn't be a bad thing. And, and, and bad thing. Back, back then, Rex Ryan, mm -hmm. back in the day, he's, he thought maybe trading for Tim Tebow would light a fire under Mark Sanchez. The problem is Tim Tebow can't throw for shit. <laughs> no, no. We don't so do that. there's no competition there, really. <laughs> and don't yeah. get me started on the Geno Smith factor, because Geno Smith can't. So play. how about this? So since so my team is apparently no longer in the tank for Trevor Lawrence, you know, market, how about your New York Jets? Do you think he would be? He would give you guys the greatest opportunity moving forward, because everything we never heard from the guy. Seen from the guy. I mean, this year Clinton team, everyone can say, "Oh my God, it's Clinton." They're always that, but it was not as good as last the, the, the year. You know, the year prior, and everyone's like, "Oh, Trevor Lawrence fell off. He's a one-hit wonder." But he took that team, you know, to the national championship game yeah. and lost to Joe Burrow. You know, no shame in that. You know, you lost to the guy who won the Heisman as the consensus number one pick. You know, Trevor Lawrence. I think for the New York Jets it would be real, real good. And, and, and I, I agree, you know, any team that gets Trevor Lawrence, is, they're oh, going to sure. go from, from zero to 100 real fucking fast. Real fast. Yeah, they're getting and, competitive. And when, when Sam Darnold got drafted, I was furious, not going to lie to you. Okay. I, I threw my, my jersey on the ground, my hat, my Jets hat on the ground, because I'm like, damn it. And everyone's looking around like, what are you talking about? He's the best rated quarterback. I'm like, tell me the last time a USC quarterback won a Super Bowl. Well, then he <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the last time. The, the, that made it to the AFC Championship game and won. Yeah. Like, come yeah. on. Come on. I mean, we got to look at, I feel like 
Um, you can kind of tell coming out of the draft, like Baker Mayfield. Yeah, he's talented, but there's too much baggage. Like, what was the last time with too much, a quarterback with too much baggage really made it in the pros? True. But no, see, Cam Newton would probably be see, the, the last one when you come to mind. See, I was a big proponent of the Jets picking Baker Mayfield because every every mock draft said, oh, Donald's going number one. I'm like, good. Cleveland deserves a number one quarterback in Sam Donald. He needs to bring mm-hmm. calmness to that crazy fan base that's always asking yes. for change. Yes. But I felt that Baker Mayfield's play and his bravado would be perfect for New York. Your Jets. Oh, perfect. He, he, would, he would be a deal. perfect fit for New York. That would be his, deal. his demeanor, the way he's, the whole Never Say himself. Die attitude, the underdog yeah. attitude, that would be perfect for the Jets. Mm-hmm. I think he would have had the, had the Jets 8 and 8, 9 and 7 in his he first could've. two years. He could have, he could have. For sure. Maybe, maybe Todd Bowles might still have a job. Who knows? <laughs> Todd Bowles just wasn't the guy for the job. Not a bad coach. He just kind of. I don't think he's a good enough offensive mind to be a head coach. Well, when sure. you drag Chan Gailey out of retirement, I mean that says a lot. <laughs> yeah. About who you find, who you think is a great offensive mind? Offensive <laughs> mind. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's. I would have. I mean, the I would have gave John Gruden the money the Raiders gave him, but if I'm the New York Jets, John Gruden would, you know. Yeah, why not? I mean, you know? and, and the thing with John Gruden, too, and his Raiders, their big free agent signing is Jason Witten. You know, the man that came off of the ESPN Monday Night booth and said, screw this, I don't like ESPN anymore. I'm going to no, go back to said, Dallas. He didn't know he wasn't good at that. He <laughs> <laughs> said, thanks, ESPN, for all the money. But I'm going to go back to Dallas, and now he signed a one-year deal with the Raiders. What do you think about that, though? What do you think about that? Do you think that's – because I never thought I would picture Jason Witten in anything but a Dallas Cowboys jersey. I didn't so – I even when, he was, even when he was a free agent, everyone knew he was a free agent this year. Nobody yeah. really thought he was going to go anywhere, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I don't think his contract was that huge either way. But mm-hmm. when I think of Jason Witten, I think, yeah, he's a great safety net, but the Raiders don't need a safety net. They need, no. uh, oh, well, look at that, a Namari Cooper type player. And, and my <laughs> thing is, they have Darren Waller already at the tight end. What yeah, so are you, is, is, your, is your plan as John Gruden to run two tight ends every every down? Yeah, it must be. Because <laughs> be. you already got rid of Amari Cooper. You, you, the first thing you do is got rid of Khalil Mack. Oh, yeah. And, and now yes. you're just like, okay, we're going to Vegas with Derek Carr. And now we have two tight ends that everyone's heard, that one tight end that everyone's heard of. And another tight end that we're that we're developing. Developing, but well, doing a great job there, Waller. So, and he's doing, he did great for me in fantasy. I'll tell you that much. He sure did. He almost beat me. He almost beat me. He almost beat me. <laughs> but the rate the Raiders are, are are questionable. There's another team I believe that made a big splash. Um, I'm trying to think because we talked Buffalo. We and talked Buffalo. For Stephon Diggs. You're Miami. probably. Um, we could talk Philip Rivers Chargers. Uh, I mean, well, you know, yeah, Philip Rivers is going to the Colts. Cool. Yeah. Now, if I if I'm a quarter if I'm a if I'm a team if I'm an NFL team and I need a quarterback, so I may, may, maybe not a franchise guy, maybe maybe a bridge to next year's draft or the year after draft. Mm-hmm. But if I need a quarterback, I'm I'm calling the Indianapolis Colts and I'm saying, yo, you just signed Philip Rivers. Rivers, what you want for Jacoby Brissett? Exactly. What you I want for Jacoby Brissett? I Let me get you. that boy because that man not only finessed his way into starting money. You know what? You know what I was thinking. Um, hear me out because this is completely random. Nobody gonna think of this team connected to Jacoby Brissett, but if the Philadelphia Eagles could, you know. Because obviously Carson Wentz has health issues, I think we all understand. Um, Jacoby Brissett, man, I mean, for a backup purpose, and you're like, hey, you know, Carson, you get injured. Jacoby Brissett, I mean, plug and play. You're not oh, going to yeah. lose anything. Well, if, had he not gotten injured last year, you could say the Colts would have the Colts Colts made playoffs. For sure, yeah. made playoffs. Mm-hmm, for sure. Um, I mean, I people started to talk about Jack Doyle, and I mean, even. Like, Andrew Luck, we all know, is better than Jacoby Brissett, but I mean, Jack Doyle, I mean, he just blew up, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, he had an Eric Ebron-type season. <laughs> yes, for sure. And Eric Ebron had a Jack Doyle kind of season. <laughs> so, so they, they, that's, that's, 
I saw that one, but uh, I definitely agree with you that Jacoby Brissett could be a player. He could be a back in New England. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Um, he could. I mean, honestly, I could totally see that. And Belichick would love to bring Brissett back. Obviously, sure. he'd love for the 49ers to give Jimmy Garoppolo Jimmy back. Garoppolo back. That was his guy. guy. <laughs> that was his guy. He said, in all fairness, I didn't want to trade him. <laughs> <laughs> he said, my, my hand's forced. Just give me a second rounder, and, and you can have him. And, My hands are forced, though. Hands are tied. <laughs> I can't really, you know, make any comments. But um, <laughs> I, I totally agree. And I, I'm i having a hard time believing that the Dallas Cowboys, you know, to get back to the Dallas Cowboys right here yeah. for a second, I have a hard time believing that they're just going to not pay Dak Prescott his money. Like, it's it's so strange that they're in this scenario. This, oh. this is definitely Kirk Cousins 2.0, 2.0. where – but he's yeah, better than Kirk Cousins. And he's sure. definitely better than Kirk. He did a lot more sure. in Dallas than Kirk Cousins wishes Kirk. he did in Washington. <laughs> in Washington, for sure. And I'm just, I'm just thinking, like, well, clearly, it wasn't Dak Prescott who lost most of those games. It's definitely no. Jason Garrett's <laughs> terrible coaching decisions. The coaching decisions <laughs> and, the, and the defense not getting one stop. So it's, it, it's, so, it's just so strange that Jerry Jones wouldn't pony up. And I know they offered. Him a crazy amount of money it was like thirty million yeah, a year. Yeah, thirty. Yeah, thirty five. I believe. If yeah, believe but, correctly. but there was, was that like, whole the whole issue of the guaranteed money. Money. Mm-hmm. Because Dak is Dak is no fool. He knows yeah. that the salary cap is going to increase. Yeah, 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 it's going to increase. And you could back all that contract to where you know and you could trade him later. You know, or you oh, pay him yeah. nothing now, trade him later. You know. Um. So yeah, he, like you said, he's no fool. And I mean, for. Uh, a guy like Murray Cooper to get what he got. I mean, that, that's outstanding money. <laughs> and I know Skip Bayless loves to say that Amari Cooper is more of a home receiver than a road receiver. Road receiver. But, I mean, he disappears in big games. Like, there's a game, like, that New England game completely winnable <laughs> if Amari Cooper does something. You know, <laughs> I know he's facing Stefan Gilmore, but, man, if you're getting top dollar, I need you to at least oh, yeah, for four, sure. four or five passes. They're not asking for much, you know. And that's and Jerry Jones loves him some Amari Cooper. For sure, I like, I like Amari Cooper. And, and he's he's a good receiver, honestly. He's a good number mm-hmm. one receiver. I mean, I wish he hit the open market so the Jets could give him all the money. And, and, and <laughs> watch him not do anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> but Dak Prescott, even before Amari Cooper, he did things for the Dallas Cowboys. He led them for sure. to to a division to a home buy. <laughs> We had a had a fabulous duel with Aaron Rodgers. You remember in the playoffs? That was a great and game. Had, had that kick gone the other way, we we would be talking about Dallas possibly playing for a Super Bowl. Run. Super Bowl for sure. And you you that just doesn't ha- you don't find quarterbacks that do that. And he's a no. fourth round pick, which fourth is impressive because I played his contract. I mean, I watched him first take the other day, and even they must keep their own point. You know, if this was Tony Romo. He would have gotten his money already. And I agree. Tony Romo probably would have gotten his money by now. Doing literally all what Dak Prescott's doing. Maybe even oh, yeah. less, you know. Um, and the thing I is, think Dak people Prescott, take for granted. Yeah. You know, I think people take for granted what Dak Prescott does. Because they look at the offensive line and they'd be like, oh, Marty Cooper. And you got Michael Gallup. And, you know, Zeke. And, I mean, but this is the first time. But I'll, and here's why I agree with Dallas for doing what they're doing. If, the, if there's going to be a year, you know, where we put aside this whole, it's Jason Garrett, or no, it's Dak Prescott, you know, this would be the year. So I understand, you know, Dallas is like, okay, give us a year, yeah, give us a year. And if you go out there and do what you did last year, we'll pay you, you know, we'll, we'll give you your money, you know, but we have to see who fault it was. If that regresses at any form of matter, if they go, what? Well, they went last year, eight and eight, correct? Right? Eight, eight. eight and eight last year. So if they go seven and nine, six to ten, or something this year, yeah. you know, with literally just about the same roster attack, I don't think they lost anybody. Byron Jones, but Byron Jones is, I think, overrated to begin with. So, oh, yeah. another contract, another, you know, story for another day. Um, <laughs> I don't think they, they're not losing anything. So if they can't finish at least nine and seven, ten and six, I mean, and that, and that's, that's good enough to win the division, too, in the NFC. For sure, for sure. Because the Giants sure. are still rebuilding. You don't well, know here's the thing. Washington might be a little bit better than what everyone's giving credit. 
I mean, you know, Dan Snyder loves him some Dwayne Haskins, and I love me some Dwayne Haskins. You know, rep, I love me some rep rep the Ohio State University. See, I love that. I'm still, I'm still waiting for a team to give Cardell Jones a, a chance outside of the XFL. <laughs> but Dwayne Haskins, he's that boy. He's that boy, mm -hmm. and he he put if he put the whole state of Ohio on his back, he gonna put all of DC on his back, and mm -hmm. hopefully. This new coaching staff is going to give him all the opportunity. Yes. There's no Case Keenum or Colt nope. McCoy to nope. threaten that starting position. Uh, like they did with, the, yeah. with uh, Jay Gruden. Mm -hmm. And from the get-go, you could tell last year, Jay Gruden did not want Dwayne Haskins no. as his quarterback. He's not ready. He wasn't even ready. It was They're shocking to see that he wanted Colt McCoy to start games over Dwayne Haskins. <laughs> And I'm just like, yeah, I remember that one game, the national yeah. championship, where he got knocked out against Alabama. But, <laughs> but other than that. <laughs> that was his shining light. I mean, I was going to say, I was, you know, it's funny because we all know Kobe going to be a backup. But every time we seen the man play, he always, I mean, he's never not, you know, moving the ball. He's always driving the ball down the field, completing passes, running around. Like, I mean, it can't be not, you know. Every time you watch the guy play, he does good things, then he gets injured. And he's like, oh, well, that was the end of that, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> if you have Colt McCoy on your team, whoever your third string quarterback is, you better, be, you better be prepared to play because Colt McCoy's not going to be there for him. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And I, I'm a firm believer, though, in Ron Rivera. He put, that defense was already a top 10 unit, I believe, last year. Um, and that was with all that chaos coming on. You know, yeah. that's a stout defense. Um, he's only gonna make them better, and he he knows what he's doing with his quarterback. I don't think he'll put Dwayne Haskins in any situation foul. I almost would argue that Ron Rivera is gonna be too committed to the run. You know, like he's not gonna give Dwayne Haskins enough time, a chance to flourish or show us anything that you know. Hey, I'm making you know group big games and stuff. But I think I think overall Washington's gonna be alright. I think they'll they'll be fighting for around the eight and eight. You know, kind of work. Now, the big question with Washington is the whole Trent Williams situation. Because oh, Trent yeah. Williams has made it clear he doesn't want to stay in Washington. He doesn't want to stay there. No. So, what can you get back? He already held out all of last year. Last year. So, you already know, you know he's not willing to play. You know he's not willing to play. And he's definitely not showing up to no training camp if he stays in Washington this year. No. no. So, who, who do you think bites the bullet and gets Trent Williams? I mean... <laughs> Here's the thing. I think whoever trades for Trent Williams, I don't think trading for Trent Williams is a problem. You, you're getting easily a top 10 left tackle, arguably top five left tackle in all football when he's there. He's, he's great. You know, he's, he's great. He'll do his job. The problem is, what is Washington going to act to get rid of, you know, Trent Williams? And since he already took his hand and said, I'm going to sit out for a whole year, I'm not going to play. They can't ask for much, so they're going to have to basically, at this point, either they're going to have to do with what um, Trent Williams did, what Panthers going to have to do with the Cam Newton, and they're going to have to just let them go for what they deem to be the best offer. I, mean, I can't tell you what the best offer is, because I don't know what, you know, somebody's going to ask, but I'll, if I had to go, I guess it'll be something like a fourth round, fifth round pick. I don't think they'll get much for him, because everyone knows he's not going to be not playing. You know, if he stays on Washington, he's not going to play. Washington's just going to have to take whatever they can get at this point. And you definitely it's, such a sad, yeah. it's such a sad thing to see. Yeah, no, it is. But you definitely have to consider, even when trading with him, with the uh, Washington mm -hmm. Redskins, the contract you're going to give Trump Williams upon arrival. Because not only yeah, do you have I'm, to give up draft picks, but you have to give up cap space. Cap space because as well. He's going he, to want some money yeah, for a yeah, point yeah, he, he going to, I believe he's going to want a new deal. And I think that's also what's triggering me this, is that I think he went to Washington and probably said, hey, you know, I want, I want a contract extension. They were probably like, hey, you're getting on the back end of that contract, here, buddy. You're, you're no longer on the right you're side. You're on the wrong side of 30, sir. 30. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, uh, I don't know if I'm going to pay you all that money. He's probably like, well, if you're not going to pay me this money and we're not winning games, I'm not going to play. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't be shocked, though, if he went to a team – like, let's just say the Chargers, you know, when he goes to the team in the Chargers, yeah. maybe, you know, he'll get paid his money, but they go float amongst, like, good, but not great, you know. 
but they're going to tie their money up until a guy hits them. Like, I like what the Rams are doing with Andrew Whitworth, who, yeah. you know, like, they just resigned him, I believe, not too long, about an hour or two hours ago, and they gave him another one-year deal, and I believe it's awesome. very cat-friendly, you know, it's nothing that's going to tie their hands, and um, that's what I think these teams are going to have to start doing, you know, get smart with their money. Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, what, do you, what do you take, since we're still in free agency, the whole rumors about Todd Gurley? Because now, now the rumors are swirling that Todd Gurley is on the outs. Did you get the yeah. same notification I did that, sir? No, sir. I had, a, I had a notification on my phone probably about 15 minutes ago. Uh -oh. you know, we were talking about the Jets, and I, I looked and it said Todd Gurley most likely going to be leaving. I, I can only tell you some of the brief and bits I heard, but I, I think that it's going to be a David Johnson kind of deal where he damaged goods anyways. He's not going to be, he's not going to be once he once was. Um, and some teams going to give, you know, oh my gosh, Todd Gurley, he's it's a top five running back. I'm going to give up an arm and a leg for this guy. Yeah. It's not going to be worth it. I think the Rams also are trying to dump some salary. But they're in, and their money is tied up. Bad. Oh, yeah. Like, so they got it always contract. goes back to that Super Bowl. Like, what yes. happened to Todd Gurley? Why was yes. he not playing? He was active. Why was he not playing? Playing. And when just, you see CJ Anderson get more carries than Todd Gurley, yeah, you know he's not healthy. You know he's CJ Anderson, the man who got cut by what three teams that year? <laughs> he started the, team, the year on the Panthers. We caught him probably week four, and I mean he bounced around until he got to the Rams. And more credit to him, man. He looked good. He looked good. <laughs> and I believe the last the last thing we haven't touched on is Cleveland. They signed a a big tight end. Austin Hooper. Hooper. Austin, Austin Hooper. Hooper. Now, now here's the thing. highest paid tight end in, in football. Now, now here's the thing with Cleveland. We had this we had this moment last year. Where we were like, look at the Cleveland Browns. They have Baker Mayfield. They got OBJ. They got Jarvis Landry. They got Nick Chubb. Now. Nick Chubb. And it's like, Pretty all hard. right, but who's coaching? <laughs> who's coaching? Thank you. Thank you. That, and, that's <laughs> and that was my thing last year. I'm like, yeah, this is great, but who's that rookie yeah. I coach? And I really wanted Mike McCarthy to go to Cleveland because I'm like, I want to see these pieces go to work. work. I want to yeah, see Because yeah. honestly, you look at that talent. That's a ten and six, eleven and five win team. With here's all that the talent, name, here's the name that I think will get some people in Cleveland, you know, itching a little bit. What if um, Jim Harbaugh, you know, decides, hey, Michigan's not looking like it for me right now. You know, I'm having my fun, but I want to dip my toes back in the NFL. And I mean, he's. Oh, we, that, if that, we're going off, great fit. If we're going off track record, you know, yeah, if we're going off track record, I mean, the guy's obviously a proven commodity. He can win in the NFL. Um, and what would be cool is he'll be facing his brother twice a year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, that, that would be some great football. But then, mm -hmm. but then, while we, I say that, but at the same time, it's like, all right, we're in, what, year three of Baker Mayfield now? Year three. He had Hugh Jackson three. year one. He had Freddie Kitchens year two. Um, they both mm -hmm. failed. <laughs> <laughs> and now you have this other guy from Minnesota, Soda. I guess. I don't know I don't why either. they would hire I don't know him. Enough, yeah, I don't know enough about him to even critique him. So I, I'm, I'm just going to assume that uh, Kirk Cousins played decent enough to say, wow, he can do that with Baker Mayfield. <laughs> but I would love Harbaugh to go to Cleveland. I, I, what, what Cleveland needs is a coach that's been there, done that, can they discipline need the players, and say, y'all ain't been to the playoffs. I've been to the playoffs. I can take you there. Ideally, what, a person I was going to say would be nice for them is Bill Cowher. I don't think he'll ever come back to coaching. I no. think that train is, you know, you know, everyone's like, oh, maybe Bill Cowher. No, I don't, I don't think so. Um, even the offensive coordinator from the Kansas City Chiefs, um, I know he's interviewed a few gigs. I thought he it was looking likely like he might get a head coaching job this year, but I think he's staying put in Kansas City yeah. for another year. Um I know he was offered the job at uh, Colorado, but that that whole program is in, in is in major flux. Unless you, good luck. unless you're going there to smoke, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have, I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> is there another team that uh that, that crossed your mind this free agent period? Um, so far? I mean, this episode has been not fun, but we we covered a lot of teams. Um, I think we didn't really know. And we didn't really, like, key in on Arizona. We kind of talked about the under-hopkins over there, but we never really 
talk about Colin Murray, you no know, year two. Um, it seems like every year now, the second year is the go-to year. Which I'm so excited to watch Daniel Jones this year. I think he's going to make some great improvements for the New York Giants as well. But I think Colin Murray might be a dark horse. He, hear me out. Might be a dark horse for MVP. You know, MVP. MVP. We've seen Lamar Jackson, I mean, who we all know was good, but we didn't think he was that good. You know, we were like, oh, Lamar Jackson, he'll be all right. You know, he won't be bad. But, I mean, and Colin Murray's, at this point in time, a better thrower than Lamar Jackson is, even is, you know, right now. Yeah. So, I mean, and I think he has a stronger arm. So, I, I get excited with Larry Fitzgerald's last run, you know. I'm not. I'm not too sure that they, you know, can, you know, they they're gonna make some noise. They're gonna make some noise. Oh yeah, for sure. especially if it's Larry Fitzgerald last year. And the thing you, yeah. you gotta remember is that remember when Aquan Bolden was back with Arizona. Mm-hmm. Larry Fitzgerald mm-hmm. was damn good. He was, he, was, he was damn good when when Bolden was there catching, all, getting all those corners and safety. Oh, the safety, you know, opening now, the, 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 the routes. Yeah. The Arnold Hopkins is going to be commanding the double team. Larry Fitzgerald, even at OH, has some of the best hands in football. And he's going to have week after week after week opportunities to be the number two corner on the Pilly Kings. You know, and, and I mean, like you said, and Quan Bolden, we've seen, we seen what happened. In, and also, Christian Kirk, he's also oh, another. We haven't even touched on Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk they got, they have know, a loaded squad right there in Arizona. Yeah. Like, they're, they're they, def- they got, I definitely agree with you. He, he, Kyler Murray's he's going to be a dark horse. Team. I'm not saying especially, he's, you know. Especially if, they, yeah. if they, they overtake the Niners, the Niners go on a Super Bowl hangover. Yeah, and, for sure. And, 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 and maybe go 9-7 and seven, but miss the sometimes it, Yeah, sometimes it just goes off this, you know, how your schedule will play out. You know, like Russell Wilson, it's not like the Seahawks were in, the, in thought of going undefeated, you know. But it was the quality of wins in – how he uplifted the team. Kyle Murray can uplift that team. He, his name will be in the hat for sure. Yeah, and Eric Armstrong is, is no longer part of San Francisco. He got no, he is. Eric Armstrong's there. It's the Forrest Buckner. It's the Forrest Buckner. 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 Yeah, the Buckner. He's now Buckner yeah, he, isn't there. But yes. Buckner and for and the Forrest Buckner and Armstead. Yeah. Made like a great two trees. on that defense. Yeah, two line. trees. Two trees. Um, six, <laughs> I think they're both like six, seven, six, eight apiece. I mean. <laughs> Everyone knows Nick Bosa is the best player on the defense. Yeah. Like, he, he's the, the main guy and everyone else. I mean, I want you to D4 to Nick Bosa. I think I don't care who your DTs are. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to yeah. get single coverage every time. And it, but it, it, does, it does make it a little easier without uh, Buckner there down the middle. Makes oh, it slightly for sure. easier. For sure. Makes it slightly easier. I mean, they still, the crazy thing is, they still got four first rounders on that defense. Uh, yeah. Still four of them. You know, That's, they lost one. But they still got Solomon Thomas, so they drafted what four third overall two years ago. Yeah. So I mean, they're, they're, they're gonna play the play, man. They're gonna play. That whole that whole NFC West is just a, a whole yeah. model. best division, I believe, in football. Best yeah. division, I will say. It's it's a great model to, to to take from on how to get how to get the right general manager, the right head coach, the best mm-hmm. scouting. The best that, scouting. Those teams are built straight from the draft. Literally, you never want anyone. I don't know about this Cliff Kingsbury guy. I don't yeah. know about him. Yeah, everyone's like, well, I, I'm so. And they were really quiet last year too, and, and that's that's the best kind of way you want you want your team to be, just team quiet be. under the radar. Radar the flying around. Go undefeated for a couple of weeks, maybe mm-hmm. go nine, ten, ten and two. I mean, you remember even games. even with San Francisco when they were six and zero last year, nobody yeah. believed that they were that good. Everyone was like, huh. They hadn't played nobody, you know. <laughs> it was who they play, and then they, I remember they had that statement game against. Um, the Seahawks, I believe, on Monday Night Football. And oh, yeah. everyone was like, everyone was like, okay. But I know who they are now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely been a very interesting for you, you know, for you to see Bulls It's so definitely going to be a great NFL uh, season coming up. Mm-hmm. And I think real quick, the rumor, the last rumor I want to talk about mm-hmm. is Antonio Brown possibly joining Tom Brady mm-hmm. in Tampa Bay. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know how how likely that is. <laughs> I, I mean, it, football side, the legal things that this man will have to do to <laughs> get back going in the NFL is another topic, and I honestly, hear me out. I'm a firm believer that Pittsburgh understands that Lee Van Bell, he's on the market. They could have got him last year at the trade deadline if they were willing to give, and I believe, what was it, a second, middle, third rounder, or something like that. 
if they were willing to get and with all the apologizing going around, I'm, I'm not going to rule out. He might not be back in a fifth or still jersey. <laughs> I've seen crazier things, man. You know, not even a ring of honor. <laughs> like, and, and if, especially if you know he can get Le'Veon Bell back there, too, you know. He'll, I think he'll amend with Juju. Juju doesn't seem like the kind of guy to hold grudges either, so I think they can get past that. And I mean, I I have heard those rumors about Tampa Bay. Oh, I'm following whatever Tom Brady's going. I'll be with Tom Brady. I don't think Tampa Bay is going to be interested in dealing with that. You're going to have to – whatever team's interested in AP is going to have to have the right structure around and – as great as the leader as Tom Brady is, I don't know how much of that leadership would have just Bill Belichick, you know? True. So. It's definitely going to be something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Well, that's, oh. yeah, this, this won't be your last time hearing my voice. Uh, yeah, I'll be, <laughs> I was just I'll about be to around. say, uh, it's definitely great to have you on as a guest. I appreciate so it, brother. Thank you for making time yes. to join the yes, show. Sir. Definitely going to have um, you on again. I mean, yeah, I mean, you have to, man. We have to assume we got to start talking about basketball, man. Like, you know, are we going to walk right into the playoffs? What's going to go on? So, I mean, obviously, when the coronavirus thing goes quiet, we will be able to have that conversation. But, well, no, just so uh, you know, and, and all, all the listeners know, that once we get news of the NBA being started up again, we're, we're going to start right away. Oh, for sure. For sure. Ex- ex- very expeditiously. <laughs> <laughs> On a new episode. But I want to thank you, Roll, for coming yeah, to the show. Uh, thank you, my man. Off the bench. It's been great having you. For all you yeah. listeners, follow on Spotify, subscribe on YouTube, and I'll catch y'all later.